what's going on welcome back in today's video we're going to talk about empire and stalker and previously i have promised that we will cover a video a separate video for talking about partial empire and star killer so basically star killer is the GUI interface of powershell empire you can run powershell empire here uh, and you can work on the command line but if you want to work on the GUI interface all you have to do is to start empire and at the same time start star killer with the option no sandbox so here is the interface for star killer so it's like you are working with empire but on the GUI interface now what is the basic use case for star killer the basic use case for uh, star killer is when you have already gained access okay i'm using the example i am using today is the blue windows machine from try hack me i have gained access by exploiting eternal blue vulnerability and now here comes the use of powershell empire and star killer to perform post exploitation so as you can see we have a menu consists of listeners stagers agents modules etc so basically the listeners menu it's self-explanatory right you create a listener and to receive connections back this is the first component second we have the stagers the stagers are considered much like the payload the piece of code that delivers uh, the payload and lets you have let you have the connection back the connection that you will receive will receive in the form of an agent so basically here once we have set up a listener you send your stager to the uh, target machine you will receive here uh, the machine as an agent and you will be able through this agent to perform post exploitation privilege escalation and other tasks modules the module here the use case of modules come after you have gained access and after you have received the agent you can execute modules that contain privilege escalation post exploitation antivirus detection uh, exfiltration etc it depends on the use case and the, or the scenario you are involved in Credentials, here you will see all of the harvested credentials after you have just gained access to your target. Uh, all of the credentials, they will appear in the form of hashes or passwords automatically. No need, to, to, no need for an action to be done from your side. If you want to add a credential manually, you can add it from here. Reporting here lists, it's much like bash history in Linux. It uh, lists all of the modules, you have run against the target. So it's pretty much like a pre-reporting uh, or um, you can just track your uh, what you have done on the a machine. Users, if you are collaborating with other users, my user is Empire Admin, the default user. Here settings, change your password whatsoever. So our scenario here assumes that we have gained access to our target. Let's minimize this and analyze the scenario so here we have exploited our target with eternal blue vulnerability we have interpreter shell we can type get your id see who we are we are oh authority system uh, let's see here who am i oh uh, i'm not in the shell so shell who am i or net user so administrator, you guessed John. So basically here, uh, that's what we have for now. Now we're gonna explain how we will use Empire to perform post-exploitation and privilege escalation, etc. So the first uh, step is to create a listener. Mm, all right, so let me come back and create a listener. So from here, we choose a type of listener. We have many options. We have HTTP, um, interpreter. So actually the listener, the choice of listener and the preference of choosing the listener comes back to you. So basically for this um, scenario, we're gonna, uh, since we have already here uh, an active interpreter uh, session or listener, I'm gonna choose another listener. So in this case, we can, we can choose HTTP. Here we can see the name. Um, here we can see the IP. I'm going to change this to the actual IP I have from the VPN connection, which is this one. 
All right. So here we choose the port. We can choose whatever port you want. For example, 8080. And of course, the other options, uh, you can spend time, uh, you know, discovering the options here. Since we are using a HTTP listener, here we can, we have the option to select the agent. In this case, it is uh, Microsoft IIS 7.5. And here is the command, right, that will be used for the stager, I guess. Um, what else we have? Okay, we can see other options here, default loss limit, default jitter. Um, okay, so here we have the bind IP, which is the IP to bind to. Uh, you are fine if you leave this running as 000. Um, well, for the default profile here, if we go back, this will allow us to specify the profile or user agent. Actually, this is not the user agent, this is the header. Here is the user agent. We can select the user agent, by the way, and select the user agent that suits our scenario. The headers is, as you know, this is a HTTP listener, so it is a perfectly normal to have a HTTP listener a header. Okay, so the launcher here, what kind of launcher we will, will be used uh, and, you know, link to the stager. We can leave these fields as is, optional fields, if there is SSL, certificate path, whatsoever. We're not going to use that. So we're going to submit and create the first listener. Right, so we're going to go back and see so how our first listener. Now, this listener will be used to listen for incoming connections. So let me go back and modify on this. We can make it um, other than 8080. Since we're going to use 8080 for the Python later down the road, we're going to name this as 55. I can modify on this. Uh, okay. Let's, let's come back and delete this listener and create a new one. HTTP here. Five, 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 five. And of course, that is the same bind. Okay, I'll leave everything as is and submit. So here is the first listener ready for the incoming connections. Now, the next step is to create the stager, the piece of code that will deliver the payload and enable us to use the agents. Okay, generate stager. Here we select the type. We have many types. Every type is tied to a specific scenario. For example, the multi listener, uh, multi launcher, and the uh, the launcher here. And there is one uh, one. Uh, let me go down. The bat. So we have Windows launcher bat, and we have the multi launcher. These are among the most common ones okay it's fairly universal stager but the difference is the bat the batch file relies on a batch file to be run on the target in order to establish the session and of course we have here bash for linux bat, basic bash stager what about okay you can see here we have OS X apple script uh, if your target is apple or mac this uses the Apple's own programming language. Let's go down. The same here. Ducky. So OS X Ducky here, if you want to perform a USB attack. So you can select OS X Ducky and transform the payload, uh, sorry, the stager with the USB. Plug it into your target machine and you will get the connection back. Launcher, OS X, everything here is related to OS X. Let's go down. Macro for Excel. TNC, similar to rubber ducky, but used for uh, physical attacks. Okay, so we have many stagers. So for this scenario, since we are dealing with the Windows box, we have the option. Right, or have many options. First, we can use multi launcher since this works most of the time. Or we can use, uh, let's go down, 
Windows um, DLL. We can use Windows Launcher Bat. Um, HTA, of course. HTA uh, for bypassing antivirus detection. We can use this. If our target uses antivirus, uh, then we we are better off using Windows HTA. Let's go down. Yep, that's it. So use bad file. It is better and more stable. Okay, listen with HTTP. The language is PowerShell. Submit. Okay, let's download this one. Save it in the Empire. Rename this as Stager of Bat or Stager 2. Save it in the Empire. And let's go back here. Stager 2 is um, not here. No, this is a Stager 2 now. I'm going to relaunch the server and download it. Okay, okay, okay. Let's Making trips to the moon if I want to find my IP address. That's pretty silly, actually. Let me. And actually, it's pretty hard to memorize. Many numbers, many spaces, many. Okay. Stager two dot bats. Right, so now let's launch the Stager 2. What is going on? Uh, okay, so we received the, as you can see, the agents, and if you go back, to the list of agents, we can see the first agent. And here is the username, the language used, the process launched on the system, which is the stager, and the host name, which is the computer name. And here is the name of the stager, or the agent. So basically now, we can start our post-exploitation on all kind of loot, exfiltration, uh, whatever you would like to do on the system. So to do that, we're gonna go to modules, Right here, we can see many modules we can execute on the target, and of course, every module has its own purpose, has its own use case, as uh, as well as we can select to execute command on the target. So if you go up here and we can search for specific modules, And of course, we can see info about this. So this module executes a stager on a remote host using SMB exec. This module requires username and NTLM hash. So it's pretty good to find out what's required for this module before, before launching it. And we can just put all here and see all of them. As you can see, we have many things. We can scroll all the way down to explore different um, modules. Okay, so let's search for win piece, for example. As you can see, we have win piece. We can execute this on the target. Let's search for um, power view if they have it. Power view. I don't think so. Share uh, lock. Yeah, so they have share lock. And we can list all kinds of missing patches on the Windows system in order to exploit them. As you can see here, find Windows local privilege escalation vulnerabilities. 
So actions, right? As you can see here, we can execute the module. So the agent, we select the agent, which is this one, and say submit. Model execution queued for, and now it's being executed. So agent, as you can see, if we go back to the command line, we can see the agent name and the task assigned to it. Now here in the command line, if we type interact with the agent, right, so here we can see the results of Sherlock. So here, as you can see, uh, <clears throat> all of the missing batches on this Windows machine, right? The title, the Microsoft Bulletin, the status, vulnerability status, not vulnerable. If we go down, appears vulnerable. This one is green check mark. This one also is vulnerable, not vulnerable. So here you can see here, it runs all kinds of uh, checks, right? And it gives you uh, what is the status of the remote host, whether it is vulnerable or not. If you go back, we can see more models we can run. If we type Mimikatz, so we can see here Mimikatz. Skeleton key is for attacking, for creating a Cuprus factor as we, as I, I explained in the last video, in attacking Cuprus. So here credentials, Mimikatz, trust keys, keys, server tickets, cache, login passwords. We can dump passwords as well. So we pin this down and we click on run, specify the agent and we click on submit. Right, so as you can see, we received results. So this is the result of LSA dump, I guess. Um, yes. So here we see, um, here's this is the result of L login passwords. So here we should see some hashes or passwords. Let's go down. Password null. So this hasn't returned anything, I guess. It could be that John is not using a password, but I want to see the administrator password, which is not um, mentioned here, not displayed. Let's see, um, wait for the other module. So, this is how you use PowerShell in Power in a very nutshell. So as you can see, we have retrieved the results of um, LSA dump, which dumps the NTLM hashes, but we have only the hash of John, which is fine, but there is no hash for the administrator. Let's go back to, let's go back here and see if we can dump any credentials. So if you type grid. All right. So here we see um, PowerShell credentials, enumerate credential store, HTTP login. Let's see this. Dumps plain text credentials from the Windows Credential Manager for the current interactive user. And you know, Windows Credential Manager is used to store Windows password and other web credentials. So you can run this, of course. Um, no, okay. Specify the agent and run. Go back and see here the task has started. Enter, nothing. All right, so let me let me jump now to the questions and try hack me and answer the questions. So here the, qu the first question is, what model allows you to use any Mimikatz command? All right, let's see. Any Mimikatz command. So if we type here Mimikatz modules, so it is 
partial credentials memory cards. There is something in common between these modules. All right, actually, I didn't get the question. Um, so let's continue down the road. So basically, we have our memory cards, we have CD credentials, the hashes. Now, what if we want to um, let's delete that and see what other models we have? All right. What about key loggers? So key logger. As you can see, we have modules to implant a keylogger. So we can click we have here PowerShell collection keylogger. As you can see, logs, keys, pressed, time, and the active window. The keystroke.txt file. This file is located in the agent's downloads directory. Empire downloads, agent name, keystrokes. So basically here, if you want to capture keystrokes and then open them later, you can go back here to the Empire directory And let's so I have your downloads, CD downloads. It will be stored here. Let's try some stuff. So let me execute the keylogger and specify the agent, submit, go back, check on. So the agent tasked. All right. So now here we are on the other shell. If we control C here, interpreter, and now we can just type something, drop back to shell, cd back, cd back, cd users, cd users. Oh, okay. Directory, cd um, users. CD Joe John. Let's go to documents and see so what do we have. We have flank three dot txt. Type flank three dot txt. So it's in there. Hmm, okay. Echo. One, two, three, four, five, six, two. Um, key test. txt. Type. Key test. txt. So we have typed something here. Let's test this. Go to go back. LS. So we have the agent. Seems like something came back. One. And we have some keystrokes. Let's explore them. Get keystrokes. Job started. So these are some keystrokes that have been captured by the keylogger while the task uh, was being run. But let's uh, type something down further. Echo. Uh, I've got P2 S Nano. So nothing has been captured. Let's do that from the Empire itself, maybe. Um, so here, interact info. Okay, who am I? Net authority system, CD or directory, they are. So everything is being, oh, all right. So this is the result of the command. We have executed the IR. Let's see if we have something has been captured. Yes. Not yet. All right. Type one, two, three, four, five, six, two, key.txt. Or echo.
help agent C and these see what are the comments we can execute. LSDR R M D L C P copy cat make directory. Okay, cat one two three six two keys. anything not yet or i guess the comments need to be uh, see the keystrokes need to be executed by i mean from the from the keystrokes by the target not us i guess that's why nothing is being captured anyway this is how we uh, deploy the keylogger and credentials modules agents stages okay that was a very basic explanation of partial empire and its gui uh, version star killer of course Later down the road, we're going to be using Partial Empire for enumeration, privilege escalation, and post-exploitation from now on. I guess I'm going to be, uh, I hope I'm going to be able to do that all the time, because I'm not used to Partial Empire. I'm used to Metasploit and uh, manual listeners. Okay, so that was it, and see you in the next video.